jump into what was uh, spoken about this time, right? Um, when it comes to the budget, um, these decisions are like w preparing a budget. There are decisions that are made throughout the year. It doesn't happen um, in a, on a single day, right? So what are they doing to like the uh, uh, details that were released today? How is it relevant throughout the year when things can change any time? See, basically, it's uh, you're right in a way that all these schemes are implemented throughout the year. The government can come out and say anything at any time. Mm. But it's good to have one particular day where you prepare a vision document for the next year. Mm. Now, when we are talking the next year, just to be uh, just to be clear, we're talking about the next financial year. Mm. So this budget that was announced, its measures get implemented on 1st April of 2023 right. up till 31st March of next year, 2024. Mm. So it's good to have one day where this vision document is prepared. It's like example, if you are a salaried employee, for example, Royal, mm. uh, you would sort of, at the beginning of the year, you would make you would make this one document saying, okay, I'm going to earn so much from my salaries. If I have some investment, if I have some investments and all, TK, I'm going to earn so much from my investments. So this is my total income. Right. And here is where I'm going to spend the money. Hmm. It's good for you to have a blueprint of that, that right. this is where I'm going to spend my money and I can't go majorly overboard. Obviously, in your personal capacity, as well as a government, mm. things can go a little here and there, unis beast, like they say. Mm. So then they have, they revise their estimates. There's something called budgeted estimate, and there's something called revised estimate, and there's something called actuals. Right. So they keep a contingency for that, mm. but it's good to have have it, have the blueprint prepared once and for all. So you have something to stick by, a benchmark. Right. So I mean, it's similar to what companies and startups also do, right? It's similar to what companies and startups do. It's similar to what individuals do. The government also does the same thing. Okay. It's always good to be prudent. Okay. It's always good to have a roadmap ahead of you. Huh. Strategy, planning, whatever you may call it. So um, could you give a breakdown of where does... So this was all about how government is going to spend its money. Where is government getting its money from? Government uh, uh, revenue comes from mainly taxation. Mm. So mainly tax revenues. We have our income tax revenues, right. which have actually been doing pretty well. Mm. And we also have our indirect tax revenues, that is GST. Mm. Our GST collections have now been more than 1 lakh crore every month. Wow. So, and much more than, I think in uh, one, two months, it also crossed 1 lakh 50,000 crores, which it's is been, excellent. It's been doing record high. Yes, yes, yes. It was doing, it was, uh, it's doing a record high practically every month. Mm. So the m major source of government money, wh mm. where the government gets its money from, is tax revenue. Right. Then they also have something called disinvestment, where mm. uh, government also runs a bunch of companies, mm. public sector companies, you know, right. government, uh, I mean, uh, they have Coal India, and they have BEL, and they have another bunch of government companies which they run. So, uh, government sells its stake sometimes in those companies, like it's sold in LIC, mm. like it's sold in Air India. Right. Right. And uh, they had a little bit of stake in Axis Bank also, which they sold that. IDBI Bank, for example. So, when they sell that stake, that is another source of revenue for them. Then these public sector units, they give them dividend also. These public sector units are businesses end of the day. Mm. Whatever profits they earn, they have to give it to their owners. In this case, it's the government. Right. So government earns from dividends also, from disinvestments also, from tax revenue, which is the main thing. And the government borrows money also hmm. from the market. Right. So those are its revenue sources. Got it, got it. Um, <clears throat> there was, before the budget happened, there is something called as an economic survey, I believe, that also happens. Uh, correct. What is what is the economic survey? So and how uh, does it affect the budget or how, what does it, what correct. is the importance of it? So the economic survey was actually done yesterday, hmm. which was uh, 31st January. It's always one day before. It's always one day before. The economic survey is basically, it is a report card of what has happened in the previous year. How each sector, what were the targets of each sector, how they have performed, hmm. why has it not been up to mark or why has it done better. Hmm. So it's a report card of the past. It is a past looking, it is a, uh, yeah, it is a past looking document. The budget is a future looking document. 
It is a forecast of what we expect to earn in the future right. and what is our expenditure in the future. Got it. Got it. Got it. Interesting. Interesting. So um, uh, we have we have one question from Raghav talking about asking to explain the tax regime, which we'll definitely get into. Yes, right? we will get into that later on. The right. new tax regime versus the old tax regime. Correct. Uh, we have that uh, slated for later Correct. on. Correct. Um, again, now, how? What are your thoughts on the uh, finance minister right now? Uh, Nirmala um, Sitaraman. Yeah. Well, uh, she was given uh, charge of the finance ministry. After Arun Jaitley, I think there was a small period in which uh, our current railway minister also, Piyush Goyal, was in charge of finance ministry for a bit. And after that, she was given in charge of finance ministry. She comes right. from a finance background. I believe uh, she has worked for PricewaterhouseCooper, P PwC or some one of those uh, companies. So initially when she was, this is her fifth budget. Mm. So when she was given charge, the first two budgets were just short of disasters, to be very honest. Mm. They weren't good. She was given uh, control in 20, 2019 or 2018? 2019, 20, I believe. 2018, I think. 18, 2018, yeah, I, th I think so, yeah. Got 2018. It. This is the fifth budget. So mm. the first couple of budgets, first two budgets were just short of disasters in the mm. sense that she, whatever estimates she had made, mm. they couldn't stick by it and they had to do a lot of course correction on the way and... Uh, Lot of me me it was a me messy situation hmm. basically, hmm. and she didn't uh, give to the right sectors, and everyone had a lot of complaints. This that, from the third budget onwards, hmm. she's actually warmed up to that post of finance minister, and uh, the next three budgets, hmm. including this budget, were very good. Okay, this budget was actually a very good budget, an excellent budget if you ask any economist, because she properly balanced. Between fiscal, there's something I'm going to use a technical mm. word. It's called fiscal prudence. She mm. balanced between that mm. and growth. Mm. Usually there is a balance that if you put too much money into growth, your fiscal prudence, it slips. Okay. Fiscal prudence in the sense that uh, your expenditures. Prudence? Yeah. Fiscal prudence is basically your uh, expenditures go way above your incomes. Okay. You know, and... Of course, when your expenditure goes way above your income, how do you make up for that deficit? Hmm. You have to borrow money. Hmm. Now, this is the part. The most important figure in the budget is called fiscal deficit, hmm. which is exactly what it sounds. Hmm. When your expenditure sh overshoots your income, hmm. the amount that you have to borrow to make up for that deficit, it's called fiscal deficit. Okay. Okay. So p let me put it in simpler terms. It is basically uh, the difference between what you're spending versus what you're earning. Correct. If your spending is more than you're earning, you need to borrow some money. Correct. And that borrowed money is fiscal deficit, basically. That borrowed money is fiscal deficit, hmm. basically. Now, right. what happens is uh, because of COVID, hmm. because of COVID, our fiscal deficit, our this borrowings from the market, it went through the roof. Hmm. Usually, it's between, let's say, Two to four percent of hmm. GDP. Hmm. Okay, it's two to four percent of GDP. Last year, this year, I mean this year, hmm. this year that has gone by, our fiscal deficit was six point four percent of GDP. That means we had to borrow so much more money from the market. Right. And now this year, the government has announced in the budget that our fiscal deficit is going to reduce from 6.4% to 5.9%. Okay. And India has told the world that our fiscal deficit will be, in two years, it will be 4.5% of GDP. So we are going towards that path. Now, I will tell you one more thing. This is the way economics works. Hmm. If a government has a big fiscal deficit and they need to borrow a lot of money from the market, hmm. what happens is that crowds out private investment means what if the government borrows a lot of money from the market it's a ratio of demand and supply the mm. interest rates automatically go up mm. because it's demand and supply you're demanding more money from the market so correct. money is in short supply correct so your interest rates will go up now when these interest rates go up the private investment will not kick in because mm. they are discouraged Right. To, because when the interest rates are up, why will they borrow more money? Correct. So the government has to really tread this path very carefully. Mm -hmm. If they say, I want to promote growth and India needs growth and this and that, they have to spend money. 
right. but to spend money you have to borrow money and when you borrow too much money from the market your interest rates go up <laughs> and you're crowding out private investments right. so it's a very tricky path right right so that's why this number of fiscal deficit is very important very interesting it's like chicken and the egg question exactly exactly <laughs> absolutely <laughs> nice nice okay um so there is one question i think that we can take up which is that raghav is asking what are the top 5 expenses of the government top 5 expenses uh that's a hard one see it changes every year but uh, welfare programs are of course one of the top 5 expenses subsidies that the governments give hmm. subsidies for food grains like example this year they have announced they are going to spend 2 lakh crores to give free food grains to the poor hmm. Correct. Okay, so that is another. So this was an announcement that was made before uh, itself, which has now been made part of the budget, or that's no, different. No, no, no. This was this was just made in the budget just okay. now, a few okay. hours ago. It was made in the budget that we are going to, uh, we are going to give free food grains worth two lakh crores. So right. these subsidies are very big expenditures. Okay, then you have uh, then you have on welfare programs hmm. such as uh, job generation program. We have something called the M. M N Negras. Hmm. M. Uh, this is uh, Mahatma Gandhi. Uh, correct. Yoj- correct. Mahatma Gandhi. Something, something Yojana. So uh, I mean, this government has very fancy names. If someone knows it, you can put it down in the chat box. We are M. also Negras. sort of a yes. little. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So it's a job generation scheme which they put a lot of money into, and that sort of helps the poor people get jobs. So hmm. such welfare schemes and subsidies are the major expenses of the government. Right. Then the government has gone and spent big time on infrastructure this hmm. this year, which we'll get in. to so it changes every year what about defense defense also now last year for example we had spent 5 lakh 25000 crores on defense mm. and they had expected the uh, they ha- which was 10% bump up from last to last year okay and what is happening in defense is now we are promoting defense manufacturing in india in a big way mm. and also because of our china threat china mm. is continuously being more aggressive towards india right so we had to sort of uh, get uh, i mean we have to pump in more money towards defense right. but this budget no defense uh, no allocation towards defense was announced in the budget we have to look at the fine print mm. for that figure mm. so Got it on. wasn't announced this year we will find it in the fine print Perfect. but that is that is also one of the biggest expenditures of the government right. on defense right 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 okay we've got the full form mahatma gandhi national rural employment yes Indian. yes yes amazing amazing Correct. thank you so much raghav so schemes like this we spend a lot on schemes like this hmm. yes interesting okay let's let's jump into the budget then yeah um what would you say was the what, what according to you in your view because of course people different people have different views uh was the most shocking um, announcement the highlight of the budget in my view uh was the amount the government has committed towards spending on infrastructure mm. last year we spent 7 lakh 50000 crores on infrastructure mm. government had allocated this this year it was expected to be 9 lakh crores mm. government went ahead and it made it 10 lakh crores 10 trillion rupees on infrastructure which is a 33% mm. bump up since last year okay so this is massive on mm. infrastructure now the thing with the, uh, the the thing with infrastructure is it has a multiplier effect okay means what if the government uh, if the government goes ahead with a big infrastructure project firstly not only will it promote growth in a big way it promotes jobs in a big way somewhere i read that every rupee spent on infrastructure by the government has a multiplier effect of 3 interesting yes because uh, they generate jobs then those jobs drive up consumption in the economy upskilling happens of yes, people yes yes upskilling mm-hmm. happens so a lot of multiplier effects so this was their main in my opinion the highlight of the budget was the spending on infrastructure right. and uh, it was it was two and a half yeah it was just 6 7 years ago hmm. this figure was only 2 and a half lakh crores wow so it has gone four has fold fixed. four fold four five four four two, f- two and a half okay, two, two and a half, half. Okay, okay, yeah okay. two and a half from 2 and a half 6 7 years ago to 10 trillion now wow so uh, yeah that was a highlight of the mm. uh, budget in my and opinion. did they specify what are they going to spend it on I mean, obviously, they didn't have the uh, time to spend. I mean, specify exactly what they're going, which particular aspects of infrastructure they're going to spend on. But roads, railways, highways, ports, hmm. big turnkey projects, basically Got infrastructure it. projects. Got it. 
got it and um this 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 budget was big also because next year is the main elections right correct um how d- and i'm guessing there were a lot of things in this budget that i would say were to say um give incentive to the poor and the middle class which is the largest section of india to you know it their vote bank basically do correct. you think there were any such schemes that were of course of course uh, they uh, promoted agriculture in a big way of course hmm. and uh, i'll just get to this one point where you said um, which is a very interesting point where you said uh, the general elections and why people are saying this is the last full budget but uh, they had a lot of uh, every budget basically has a lot that has a lot to do with agriculture so hmm. they have a lot of reforms for agriculture but this one particularly stood out because of the word agri tech so okay. they're planning to bring technology into agriculture in a big way did they not already do that uh it wasn't so much it, right. in in every budget agri tech the word agri tech i haven't heard okay so this budget really concentrated on that and hmm. also they are promoting startups in the agriculture space in a big way they have some uh, they have something called an agriculture startup fund also they have increased uh, they have enhanced credit limits for agriculture they are bringing more technology into agriculture and also india till today doesn't have a unicorn in the agriculture startup space interesting nice so maybe this agri tech Mm. promotion of agri tech in a big way we might just see an agri tech unicorn in it's this surpri- year it's surprising now that you say it, it's surprising that there's no um, unicorn in the agri tech sector because agriculture is such a big uh, correct because we haven't that. included uh, technology in our agriculture sector now right. example countries like israel and even for example you look at even a country like ukraine and all they have so much technology in their agriculture they 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 they, they do it as in the mo- modern way you know mm. what i mean we're still very backward in that respect mm-hmm. but i think the government has caught on to that finally that's interesting so if yeah. ag- if the tech part of it comes in then it's going to be oh yes agriculture in a big oh yes in a big way in a big way interesting interesting so yeah you mentioned one thing which is the full budget correct so basically um they say that this is the last full budget before the general elections now general elections are in may of next year correct so in feb of next year same time feb 1st we will mm. have a budget correct but that budget will not be a full budget because that budget that budget will have only 2 months to play with mm. that budget will be from 1st april 2024 the full budget would be from 1st april 2024 to 31st march 2025 but in between the elections are there right and in the elections a new government can come mm. there is a possibility of a new government coming mm. correct so next year's budget will be something called an interim budget or a vote on account basically okay. where they will be making a budget only for 2 months okay and they will have to take parliament approval for that for mm. every expenditure that they do mm. so that's why this is the last full budget and this was their last chance to sort of uh, woo their uh, vote bank mm. middle class and the rural po- uh, the poor mm. from the rural sections and all interesting okay mm. so um so da- is a new budget created when a new government comes in like after the full budget uh, so twi- twi- in in feb on feb 1st of 24 mm. there'll be a budget which, which will be interim right which, which will be for two months correct so if a new government comes in do they um Yes. Then do yes. a new budget. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. They have a new budget. Right. Okay. Cool. Um. Now going back to the schemes that were um spoken about, let's break it down. Say for for the sections of society, I think that'll be easier to do. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. So what were what are the benefits that are first for the poor? See. Uh. Basically, a good budget is one that takes care of everyone's needs. A mm. good budget. You can say this was a good budget when it concentrates on the. when it focuses on the long term growth mm. of the country mm. from the long term growth in terms of job generation mm. and also it has something for everyone mm. okay so you asked me first what did it have for the poor, poor people okay so this budget concentrated a lot on affordable housing mm. they allocated around 79000 crores for affordable housing and again uh, this affordable housing has a very uh, fancy name typical of the modi government uh, awas yojana i think it is okay. yeah yeah something some some something on that uh, on those lines so anyways it allocated 79000 crore towards affordable housing which was great it had a lot of reforms for the agriculture sector in the sense that they enhanced limits 
for credit so and uh, so people who are into agriculture they can get credit much easier so uh, so they can do business easier then they have also made an agriculture startup fund then they have given free food grains like i mentioned hmm. which will be entirely borne by the government it Correct. won't be subsidized it Correct. will be entirely borne by the government and that is for Two all crores for eight, all the poor 81 crore um, it it con, con, it uh, constitutes 81 crore indians out of the 130 crore indians correct 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 it does it does so these were the things they have for the poor people mm-hmm. um what about the middle class what about people like us yes middle class tax breaks mm. that's what we had mm. tax breaks so that was the main thing that was tax breaks was the main thing that they had for the middle class people so let's let's take yes. raghav's question as well he was talking about please ex- explain the tax regime okay so uh, they had five amendments to the income tax act which uh, which basically they enhanced limits they gave more money in the hands of people by enhancing mm. limits mm. so they said instead of your tax bill starting when tax meter starting when your uh, income hits 5 lakhs now that limit is raised to 7 lakhs mm. so from 5 to 7 lakhs it was raised right that so just before that break down the old regime and the new regime correct, as well correct correct so now there are two re- regimes of tax one uh, one uh, was the reg- so i'm so sorry regime basically means the way in which the tax is calculated and paid right two ways two ways two options which a common man has i mm. can select either the old option or the new option mm. so there are two options one was the old option in which the tax rates are there and uh, whatever your taxable limits are you have certain deductions against that mm. if you invest in an insurance in a health insurance in a life insurance if you invest in certain uh, mutual funds called elss mm. or if you in, uh, or if you invest in pension schemes so these are certain deductions that you used to get from your income and finally that reduced income you'd pay tax on that mm. that was the old regime mm. government gave an option of new regime last year where they said that you know what forget all these deductions hmm. whatever your taxable limit i mean whatever your income is now we'll start taxing you on that only but that limit now they have increased first right. that limit was 5 lakhs so as soon as you cross 5 lakhs you're hmm. supposed to start paying tax got it so now the government said if you opt for the new regime without deductions hmm. instead of 5 lakhs if your income crosses 7 lakhs then you start paying tax okay so that was one big relief Got in it. the form of so, a rebate so um why w- w- why is this increase significant and this basically means that the government is pushing people to use the newer way of correct. filing correct so when the government gave the option last year still uh, barely any i mean most of most of the population opted for the old regime only they haven't switched over to the new regime got it the government wants to promote the new regime because uh, in uh, advanced economies as well the, a deductionless system is deemed more efficient but why uh, i don't I, i don't know the exact semantics of it but because there are so many deductions and then there are so many that okay i can invest here i can invest mm. there so there is more complexities basically Got Got more it. deductions are more complexities basically so the government wants to promote a deductionless tax mm. deductionless tax uh, re- regime mm. so all these income tax all these income tax changes that they have made are all for the new regime Got old it. regime remains as is mm. and also they have said now by default mm. the default regime is the new regime okay but you have an option to go to the old regime so this was one change where they increase the limit from 5 to 7 lakhs mm. another change is the new regime had many slabs okay from 5 lakhs to 7.5 lakhs so much from 7.5 lakhs to 10 lakhs so much so there were mm. six slabs they've reduced the number of slabs so got they it. made it easier got it that was the second change the third change was uh, there is something called leave encashment mm. which uh, is a little technical now i won't get into it but that limit has also been increased then the fourth change was there is something called a standard deduction where you get to deduct 50000 rupees from your income mm. they've increased that limit to 52000 500 and that is under the that is that is that is, a, that is the only deduction available under the new regime but that is available to everyone okay okay it is not a s- investment specific uh, mm. de- deduction, deduction. Mm. like example if i invest in let's say uh, if i invest in elss scheme mm. 
or if I take a life insurance, or if I take that is called a specific invest. If you invest over here, only then you get deduction. That is not available in the new system. So in the new system, there is only one standard deduction, which they've increased from fifty to fifty-two thousand five hundred. Uh, it's barely anything, and also they have uh, reduced. Uh, they have reduced the tax. They they have reduced the tax rate hmm. for the highest for people who are in the highest slab. Okay. India had uh, India actually had among the world's highest tax slab for its super rich. Oh really? So yeah, if you earn above ten crore rupees, basically you're paying you're paying a tax of forty two point seven four percent. Wow. So from forty two point seven four percent, now effectively they made it thirty nine percent. Right. So these were the five income tax. This is not for the uh, the last one is not for the middle class, mm. but the other four are for the middle but, class. But um, there, there now there are questions about. um taxing the taxing more uh, taxing the rich more because the rich are getting richer and richer that's what th- there was a recent oxfam study also correct that came correct that, that oxfam thing. report also that inequality has increased big time in india huh. but uh, like i said the budget see if you if you continuously tax the rich more hmm. it is like you're discouraging them also so correct. like i said a good budget takes hmm. care of everyone, everyone. you can't say it, uh, it will probably take more care of the poor and the middle class hmm. but it has to give the rich also some incentives okay declare your taxes properly hmm. invest hmm. you know what i mean right so to encourage them also got it got it got it okay cool um what about msmes cuz msmes again contribute like about 30 to 35% to the to india's gdp right correct msmes which are medium and small enterprises small businesses medium and small businesses are the biggest job generators in india hmm i think 30% of gdp also they contribute and somewhere near 30% or more uh, i think 50% of jobs right 50% of jobs they ge- generate right so uh, our government is absolutely for giving them more incentives Got so it. here they have given basically they have given credit guarantees hmm so they tell banks okay you lend to these msmes hmm. in case anything goes wrong the msmes can't pay you back we are guaranteeing that credit we will give it to you hmm. so this encourages banks to lend more money to msmes to got be a it. little more free with free. them hmm. so they've increased that credit guarantee spend got it okay and also there is a uh, there is something called presumptive taxation basically they've tweaked a taxation law they've enhanced limits okay of a taxation law saying that uh, to again uh, for the msme sector for right. small businesses and for professionals right. up to a certain limit okay so one tax benefit under presumptive taxation then they have uh, increased credit guarantee scheme and also the government plans to spend around 22138 crores towards promoting msmes and giving them benefits so okay. these were the benefits for the msmes right um So what are these be- like apart from apart from the loan part of it? What are some of the other benefits that? Like I told you, the taxation. They right. have tweaked something in the taxation is okay. called presumptive taxation. Right, right. Basically, where uh, presumptive ta- ta- taxation is basically where the MSMEs are said, okay, you know what? Don't maintain your books of accounts. Don't get into all this compliance and all that. You know, it takes up a lot of money and all. If your income is below a certain limit. Okay, you have to pay tax at only six or eight percent of that income. That's it. No one's going to ask you any questions. No need to maintain books of accounts. No need to hire chartered accountants. No need to do. No need to go extensive, re, uh, extensively oh, on compliance measures. Interesting. So they've raised that limit. I think it was two and a half crores. It was two and a half crores a year. I think now they made it three crores a year. So does this mean the ease of business is also yes, gotten better? Yes, yes. Ease of business is also is also gotten better, and it's helping more MSMEs. So there are basically, if you increase the limit, mm. more people get into that net. More right. people can be classified as MSMEs. Correct. Which helps the sector. Interesting. Okay. And what about startups? Have they said anything about startups? They have said one thing about startups where uh first they, uh, by the way this government loves startups. Yeah, yeah, yeah. India, yes, yes, yes. India is deemed as the startup uh, hub of the world. I think we have the third third highest number of startups yeah, in US, the world. US, China and uh, yeah, yeah, third third highest number of startups in the world. In uh, in the fine print we'll have to see what they said for the startups, but from what I gauge uh, what was announced is um mm. First, a startup was classified as a startup if, mm. if it has been in operation for seven years. So mm. whatever benefits are there for startups, you get it only up till seven years. Mm. Now they've said instead of seven years, ten years. Mm. So that was the one thing they announced. Now we'll have to see in the fine print what else they have for the startups. Got it. So got they've it. increased the limit basically from got seven it. to ten years. Got it. Got it. Which uh, helps. 
and um, okay so there's a question from omkar is the new tax regime bad for insurance companies yes it is bad for insurance companies and a lot of insurance stocks and a lot of asset okay. management companies okay. and a lot of asset management companies if you see uh, their stocks went down in a big way and why is it bad because it doesn't encourage it doesn't encourage uh, investment into insurance like in our old tax regime you used to get a deduction if you have health insurance, insurance. if you have a life insurance mm-hmm. if you have health insurance for yourself your family your parents everybody mm. used to get a deduction so people used to be incentivized towards taking more insurance now in the new tax regime in the new tax regime there are no such deductions so people are, they won't be incentivized towards taking an insurance for tax purposes okay they'll take it okay because i really need health insurance so chalo theek hai i'll take it but that education of health insurance life insurance also not a lot right that's what the yeah yeah, yeah uh, oh yeah yeah india is a massively underinsured uh, country as a whole correct we are uh, compared to america and all our insurance uh, our insurance is like almost zero so there's a big uh, there's a big market for that for pe- people who get into it hmm. but yeah this new tax regime does does not encourage insurance and that's why insurance stocks also went down let's oh. be very clear about that interesting yeah. interesting okay um cool so w- what about rich people is it is it just the tax d- deduction is there anything yeah. else also and uh, for rich people for rich people like i said the maximum effective rate from 42.74% to 39% it was reduced mm-hmm. and for big businesses mm. they have uh, come up with a lot of uh, they haven't quantified it but mm. they announced a lot of measures for ease of doing business basically okay so they decriminalized 3000 provisions they decriminalized it because for small small provisions if like example if a director makes a mistake over your if you're a director in a company mm. and you make a mistake okay i didn't file mm. this i didn't go as per this compliance or you forget to do it was criminal Pro- provisions hmm. they could come after you hmm. they could extort you you'd have to pay money and it was a headache right so they decriminalized 3000 provisions and also they announced other measures of ease of doing business because they are going digital in a big way right so a, a lot of digital and ease of doing business has merged hmm. and also the spending on infrastructure hmm. so big businesses usually are uh, they have infrastructure as a part of their whether it be construction companies or whatever whatever the benefits go on to the big uh, businesses also got it got it got it yeah so uh, big businesses what else is there I think these three were the only things that I uh, so I'll again I'll need to read the fine print of it mm. ease of doing business infrastructure spending uh, and decriminalization of more di- digital with mm. uh, with the big business more right. digital de- de- decriminalizing all those provisions and all mm. and the rest we'll have to probably check in the fine print and there was a large push for um, towards green energy as well right I believe Oh yes yes green energy uh, so india plans to go carbon neutral by 2070 hmm. and there was a big shift i mean uh, so we have to shift our coal producing power plants hmm. and also uh, other stuff to renewable energy basically renewable energy is wind water solar electric vehicles green hydrogen this hmm. these, these are the renewable energy sources so the government has uh, government has announced some more than 50000 crores basically they announced i think uh, it was 20000 19000 crores for green hydrogen sector hmm. green hydrogen sector and another 35000 crores they announced to help us transition from our fossil fuel hmm. to the uh, to our green energy interesting okay um and this is to keep up with the our objective to be carbon neutral by yes, 2070 yes yes and also they are scrapping they're scrapping old vehicles in a big hmm. way they're they're really encouraging that our uh, road transport minister mr nitin gadkari he's very enthusiastic about this so they're going to scrap i think uh, government vehicles that are over 15 years old hmm. and also they're promoting electric vehicles in a big way so mo- may- maybe some of them will be replaced by electric vehicles right. electric buses infrastructure all that so green energy is one of the top i would say one of the top 3 budget highlights hmm. along with uh, I- infrastructure, infrastructure and mm. probably tourism right so and and this so um if they're trying to push um, evs that would also mean they would have to install the charging ports and stuff like that it will come under infrastructure itself N- uh, no that will come under charging infrastructure that's different uh, okay. there are certain companies that take care of that tata tata uh, 
Tata Power is the main one over there, and there are of course other countries, uh, other companies also. Interesting. And another another big thing that we already spoke about was the defense budget, right? Defense uh, budget. Uh, what is the increase in the defense? Do you have any idea? No, that? like I said, uh, they didn't announce it in the budget. We we'll okay. have to see the fine print of it. So they didn't talk about. They the didn't budget. talk about it. They didn't talk about it. Any specific reason? Uh, I think they had more important things to talk about. Basically, got it. Got I it. honestly thought they would talk about the defense budget. Yeah, because that's one of the right main right, things, right? Right. I honestly did think. Of course, there is an outlay for the defense budget, and it will be increased. It was five lakh twenty five thousand crores last year. Hmm. It will be increased, but we'll have to check in the fine print. They didn't announce anything. They didn't announce anything. Didn't announce anything. Interesting. Okay. I think this was a complete breakdown of the budget, right? There were another couple of sectors also. I mm. think uh, tourism. Mm. Tourism. They said that they are going to promote tourism in mission mode. They mm. use that word, mission mode. So uh, tourism infrastructure also they are going to improve in a big way, mm. and also they are going to upskill a lot of people uh, for the tourism sector. So hotels you'll see doing very well listed hotel stocks today they were buzzing Lemon Tree Hotel was up I think uh, right. some nine ten percent and uh, uh, Indian hotels which is your Taj was up also a good amount they all been declaring good results also these stocks mm. and so travel and uh, tourism is going to be promoted in a big way and does this mean airlines also get better and the the structure of airlines also get better now they will see more traffic that's for sure now whether they can manage that uh, uh, i mean i don't think they already be able to manage that uh now it, airlines is a very cyclical sector it depends on your oil prices and this and that uh, they, i think the only one very well run airline india has is indigo airlines hmm. other than that it's all up and down hmm. it was hmm. a very competitive sector right but yes there will be footfall in the airline sector as well and another sector that got a big hike of 40% mm. was the it it sector right uh, uh so basically now it ministry ministry of uh, it has mm. is being allocated 16550 crores which is a 40% increase and a good portion of that 40% increase from the last budget yes 40% increase isn't that massive yes that's massive and They will deploy it into semiconductors. Ooh, yes. interesting. Semi Semi semiconductors. Just to give you context, semiconductors was there was a uh, supply chain issue during the lockdown. Oh yes, semiconductors are those chips basically in which uh, all electro they are inserted in all electronic electronics, items from your light, uh, from cars. Your, Yes, electric vehicles, and now with five G and electric vehicles set to boom, hmm. we'll need more and more semiconductors. So they're everything, and from your phones to your uh, laptops to your computers to every every electronic item. So before Taiwan was the is the is still, still the hub, is. still the hub of semiconductor manufacturing because of lockdown, the supply chain issues, which created a lot of shortage of electronic devices and cars. Um, so India took up the uh, 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 objective of. making sure that they are the they they become the hub of semiconductor manufacturing we are trying in uh, india doesn't have even one factory till now that manufactures they semiconductor. haven't started one in uttar pradesh mm, i thought no no, no 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 uh, they've started working on a factory india doesn't have one fully functional factory to manufacture these integrated circuits or electronic uh, i mean sorry uh, se- semiconductors basically each factory costs between 3 and 4 billion dollars to put up wow. so uh, uh, there are i think currently i think two factories underway mm. that are uh, that are being made right now vedanta is vedanta one vedanta is one of them anil agarwal led uh, vedanta has uh, set up one hmm. and also the government has announced a semiconductor policy in which they are giving 75000 crores hmm. they uh, not they haven't announced it in the budget but uh, they had announced it a few months ago hmm. where they have come with a se- semiconductor policy where they are saying we'll give 75000 crores worth of incentives to those willing to manufacture these semiconductors in india so they are pushing semiconductors in a big way Got so it. this is truly a shift towards new india hmm. digital india new india where you're promoting jobs for the youth hmm. we as a country i think we are the only probably last major economy where we have a young po- po- population you know what i mean mm, mm. otherwise the uh, population of uh, china and japan and all are dwindling america yeah. is also not anything great uh, western europe is on the down mm. so we are the only ones and uh, rightly so this government has sort of latched on to that and they are giving incentives by the dozen 
which is very interesting yes interesting have they done anything so there is a question from uh, uh, a person pala sen i don't know if that's your correct name or not but pala sen anything in particular for commercial residential real estate commercial or residential real estate commercial or residential real estate like i said affordable housing they have announced 79000 crores now they uh, that will spill over into uh at least the other uh, re- re- residential real estate sector mm. so you'll see a few stocks f- you'll see a few stocks that are booming here and there mm-hmm. but specifically they haven't announced anything Got but it. our real estate cycle our real estate cycle is on an upswing right now Interesting. so it was down and out for a few years i think okay. it was 6 7 8 years since we oh. haven't seen but now you're seeing all these all these companies declare results and they every company is saying oh we have the highest sales in this quarter we have the highest sales in that quarter highest profit in this quarter i profit in that quarter so uh, real estate is on the upswing interesting okay cool um and and last question anything on petrol diesel fuel anything that's the major concern right that is a major concern and that's why uh, they haven't announced it in the in the budget i didn't hear anything about it in the budget but uh, like i said they are shifting from they are shifting we are shifting from coal and we uh, basically uh, as you see this problem with petrol and diesel and all is india unfortunately we are not gifted in terms of natural resources right. okay tomorrow if we as a nation if we have to progress it's only going to be on our entrepreneurial ability mm. correct mm. it's only going to be because we are good entrepreneurs it's not like russia you know one us president he made a statement about russia uh, russia is a gas station masquerading as a country <laughs> i mean <laughs> these guys they're so lucky in terms of natural resources natural gas and uh, you know oil and this and that we indians we don't have it so our biggest import is oil mm. but our government is really working on substituting this oil import okay. and this oil import and again our green energy transition mm. is a step in that direction right but till we transition totally to let's say electric vehicles green hydrogen and all that there is one thing the government has done very interestingly and it is promoting ethanol in a big way mm. so ethanol is a biofuel which is made from uh, which is made from like crops mainly sugarcane but you can make it of rice and wheat and millets and this and that so it's a biofuel and they are planning to mix 20% ethanol with petrol by 2025 we have a target by okay. 2025 in fact this target was for 2030 okay 2030 oh. imagine they preponed the target when by was the last years? by 5 when was the last time in india target got preponed everything keeps getting postponed <laughs> nothing has <laughs> preponed uh. so that's that's for you to know how serious they are mm. so now by 2025 we will have 20% ethanol mixed with petrol and they are trying to find a binding agent where they can mix it with diesel also got that it. will be a game changer got it most of our stuff runs on di- diesel over here right right but they haven't announced anything specifically in the budget right based on omkar has said vedanta x foxconn i think that's what yes the, yes 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 yes, yes right? the semiconductor one correct awesome okay um last question for you mr talk stock any stock recommendations based on today's budget stock recommendations uh i won't go out again do your own research he is just recommending based on his because he is an expert himself he is recommending based on his research and his views but highly recommend you guys research based on what he recommends as well don't just Correct. blindly buy this is not a recommendation basically please do your own research now i would say green energy for example i would go I have gone out on a limb and said adani green but i'm not going to say that because of the adani route guys please don't touch any adani stocks okay but the biggest beneficiary of this green hydrogen and shift towards green energy would be adani green ideally if this hindenburg report didn't come out but mm-hmm. i don't see that so now you have jsw energy which is doing a lot in green energy you have tata power which has announced a lot in a uh, lot of uh, capital outlay for green energy and of course you have reliance mm. reliance has announced what was the figure over 10 years they plan to spend something close to 50000 50000 crores, crores yeah, yeah 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 over 10 years they, they 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 plan to spend so this this was green energy railways okay railways have got a big capital outlay highest ever government has in this budget announced 2 lakh 40000 crores mm. 2 lakh 2.4 trillion rupees towards railway infrastructure got it so you have a few railway stocks uh, i think one is rail vikas nigam limited rvns then one we have ircon hmm. 
and uh, there is one more i can't think of it so railway stocks will do well infrastructure stocks of course will do well the best way to play the infrastructure theme if you are getting confused which stock is going to benefit basically this the way to play it is now government has announced 10 trillion rupees for infrastructure hmm you are second guessing yourself even me everyone second guessing that which company will corner maximum of this investment hmm so rather than that just buy an infrastructure etf when you know that the government is yes or a small case or a small case so this is a collection of infrastructure stocks basically all of them from your cummins to your siemens to uh, lnt will be there all these massive infrastructure stocks and uh, they have an etf of it so instead of guessing which infrastructure stock and which maybe you could go in for an etf again please do your own research so these were sector specific and semiconductors we have uh we have three one is vedanta will benefit uh one is tata elexi which is big time into uh, design and testing of semiconductors they you know manufacture design mm. and testing and there's one small little company called moschip mm. that will that can also benefit mm. so these were the sort of stocks and um, tourism oh yes i forgot of course uh lemon tree hotels is great mm. lemon tree hotels just declared an amazing set of results yesterday only and uh, indian hotels which is the biggest hotel chain uh, the taj hotels basically right. these two listed stocks there are others also uh, east india would hotels would you recommend EIH. airlines no i wouldn't recommend uh, uh, recommend airlines hmm. because hmm. there's a very cyclical sector and lot of competition in that sector right. it's like you know how example uh, this is what i keep telling people that uh, if you go online you want to book a flight from let's say bangalore to goa you'll go online you'll go on to one of these sites you'll get a list of 10 options now you will not see which which option will you take you will take the option which is the least even mm. if that ticket is <laughs> 10 rupees cheaper than the other ticket aag ban karke you are going to take that ticket cheaper only. ticket yeah you are, you are not going to say okay this airline gives me better uh, uh, i mean in this in this lounge i'll get b- better facilities or in this airline i'll get better food or this that you don't see all that aag ban karke even if it's 10 rupees cheaper you will choose that so Correct. imagine the imagine the intensity of the competition mm. in that airline correct so everyone the prices they have to keep it they mm, have to keep yeah. it in check that's why i would never uh, there are experts who play the sector and all but i'm not one of them so i would keep away from these sectors mm. basically awesome i think this was a good break 